Hello, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday Q&A. With me, Ablinette Zhang, our Chief Market Analyst. I'm Eric Griffin, President of ITM Trading. For those of you who don't know or tuning in for the first time, we take your questions submitted to us at questions at ITM Trading. That's an email address, questions at itmtrading.com. And I put them on uh, one sheet. We ask them to her live so you get a real, true, live, organic response. <clears throat> yes, it's true. I don't read them ahead of time. Mm -mm. I actually like them much better that yeah. way. So Tony C. asks, you say that during the reset, gold goes to its fundamental value, and then the currency is reset against the gold. My question is, when the currency is reset against gold, how long will gold stay at the value, and would it possibly still go higher after that? <clears throat> okay, so, so first of all, uh, gold goes to its fundamental value as the currency is being reset. So it doesn't happen, goes to fundamental value, and then reset. That's what starts to drive it somewhere near there. And yes, it typically overshoots. So everything, especially with tangibles, it goes from undervaluation to fair valuation to overvaluation to fair valuation to undervaluation. But much longer time periods than this because the first time they reset it as well is not likely the last time that it's going to be reset. I mean, on average, the reset happens three times historically. However, and, and by the third time, nobody trusts it, and that's why they then have to do something different. Um, but, you know, that's just on average. So they could do it more, they could do it less. I, I don't really know yet. Nobody's going to know that yet. And so, yeah, it, it will most likely overshoot its fundamental value in terms of that dead fiat money. And that's what you really have to understand. And if we see hyperinflation leading up to the actual physical reset, that instance Correct. in time, that, that, then well, that'll also have, it, gold will inflate during that period of time and then the reset happens it'll shoot higher correct <clears throat> yeah because it, it's you know as the inflation and as the hyperinflation kicks into gear there is a true flight to safety so the gold and the silver will reflect that but that's you know they ultimately that's why they have to reset the currency visibly for everybody is after the hyperinflation or not after because it's still going on but so that you think they're controlling the hyperinflation but they're not really changing anything and that's why they have to do it several times typically all right so chris c asks is it better to buy property during deflation or hyperinflation i don't own property right now but i have a lot of metals Things get cheaper during deflation, but hyperinflation, people can't pay for things and debt is easier to pay off. What is the smarter thing to do? Well, first of all, I'm going to say that everybody's got to do what they're comfortable with doing. And we are, in some ways, that's what the Fed is fighting is the deflation. It's just the opposite side of that coin. Now, considering how cheap debt is, you know, then you got to do what you're comfortable with. If you don't own property now, but you have lots of metals, are you renting property? Because during hyperinflation, the government's going to come in most likely. I mean, that's what history tells us and cap the level of your rent. But until they do that, that's going to be going up. So do I, what is that? Fire alarm. Is that in our building? I'm sorry, but it seems like there is an alarm going off. I think we need to figure out what's going on. Will you just pause for a second? Just and let's go. Let's go double check. We're we're <clears> gonna <throat> double check on what this alarm is. Yep. Oh, stop. Yep. False alarm. Do, false, alarm? false alarm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. False alarm. Um, <laughs> you know this is live. Yeah, totally. But. Uh, Debt is easier to pay off as long as you have those metals. So what's the smarter thing to do? Whatever you're comfortable with. Property values in terms of gold will get a lot cheaper. But you also need to have a place to make your last stand. Would I speculate on any property right now? 
heck no, heck no. They've postponed the mortgage moratorium, so they've bought some time in that regard. And uh, I thought we were going to get another another alarm. <laughs> yeah, because somebody was waving us down. But okay. it looks like it's okay. Looks like it's okay. Uh, so, you know, you have to determine where you want to make your last stand. And if that can require some debt that you pay off during the hyperinflation, fine. But if you're good with renting, you're going to be able to buy it a lot cheaper in terms of of the fiat because of the gold. So either way, you can go. Right. And real estate typically drops in hyperinflation because people like in Venezuela, people just abandon the property. So you could buy properties for way, yeah, way cheaper. Right. Yeah. And in Japan, um, you know, commercial real estate was nine was 95 percent below the high and residential 85 percent. So. So maybe buy your primary residence, protect it with gold, and then wait to buy your speculative real estate until after. Oh, yeah, definitely not the time to buy any speculative real estate right now. Okay, so Linda N. asks, are private vaults really safe under the most dire of circumstances? That's a great question. That is I a mean, great that's question. something I, I think about. It's something I think about personally. I know you probably well, because do, too. That's because I, yeah, because I hold mine in a private vault. Um, I think it's safer than a bank safe deposit box where the government has easier access to it. Or even like if the banks close and go on bank holiday and you just can't get access to it. Exactly. At least if it's private, you're kind of on the, I guess it totally depends on do you trust the people who are running the private vault during the most dire circumstances? Because, I mean, technically, if they own the vault, they could technically lock it down. I mean, if there was an EMP attack and everything was locked down dissipated there was nothing like you, you had no way to communicate with anybody and they locked it down could they just claim it for themselves if there was no well, rule of law sure if there was no rule of law like emp attack style right like you read the book um i read it so long ago patriots Surv- survivor it's a james wesley rawls book number one they, they give an example of like the whole system goes down and there's it's every man for himself well if it's every man for himself a private vault could just lock the doors and just claim everything that was in there it's something i think about but i, I mean we're talking high, highly <laughs> speculative what to say to that you know yeah honestly i i trust them more than i trust the banks that's what i will say so i therefore i hold my medals in a private vault that i can physically walk to if i needed here, here's to. a good question though if you weren't so um well known right you didn't have we didn't have this yeah. youtube channel and you were out here talking about it would you keep it in a private vault or would you keep it at your house no i kept it at my house so I kept it at my house and I created a whole bunch of hidey holes and we have a whole list of possible places to keep it. But yeah, I, I can't do it because of how well known I am, but that's why I hold it in a private vault. So, so there's your answer. Right. All right. So P&G asks, what will happen if JP Morgan Chase exits their short positions prior to the crash and goes long gold and silver? I'm not really sure what you're asking me. Um, well, if they got rid of their silver shorts. they got rid shorts, of their silver short positions, that means they have to go into the market and buy it. But here's the challenge, right? It's the Bank for International Settlements, the IMF. They can create as much paper, uh, gold and silver, as they want to suppress the visible price. Because what have we been seeing really since 2008, 2010 in earnest has been massive amounts of central bank buying like 20% of the mine supply. And yet, you know, and yet we see gold faltering and and silver as well. You know, what a, before I came in, in today, we were at like 1700 and change on gold and 26 something yeah. on silver, mm-hmm. right? And yet the premiums for the physical have grown and, you know, it's hard to get your hands on it. So we 17, 17, 17, 17 and 26, 30. Yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, does any of that make any sense? No, it's all managed by the paper markets. So if they wanted to continue to suppress the price of gold as JP Morgan exited their short positions on it, they would just exchange their shorts for their paper longs and do, you know, more. 
I mean, they, I think they can still control the visible price that you see. Now, what you have to pay, that's a different story, and we're already experiencing that. All right, so Hannah J asks, Hi, guys. Are bullion banks the same? This was in regards to your um, video that you did, the one on uh -huh. bullion banks. <clears throat> are bullion banks the same as bullion vaults? If you bought some silver in bullion vaults, does it mean the same thing as Lynette is saying? Um, actually, no. The bullion banks are like the COMEX exchange, and they also create all of the uh, paper, silver, and gold, and London bullion market. And the bullion vaults would be a separate entity where they actually house or hold the physical. So they're, they're two different things. Okay. All okay. right. So Robin B. asks, if the banks collapse, don't they take your debt with them? Who would pay you back if the bank is gone? Well, Robin, you would be counting on the FDIC, which has almost no money in their uh, DIF fund, which is the fund to repay you. So as long as not all banks go down at the same time, um, then, then you wouldn't know that they basically have no money to cover the expenses. But uh, if the banks collapse, don't they take your debt with them? No, because your debt would then be sold off to another entity. Right, which is and what happened you would in 2008. To, exactly. <laughs> and so you would still be responsible for the debt. So there you go. All right, so Anne A. Lean, I have Ross circulated pre-1933 gold coins. Is it my best interest to get them graded? Well, it depends, okay? Right. Um, if they were sold to you recently as circulated pre-1933 gold coins, then they're probably, probably not, not worth gradable. grading. Right. right. But if you got them, like let's say you inherited them and you got them 30 years ago, then then there might be, you. There might it might make sense to get them graded. But right. if they were recently sold to you, I guarantee people were coming through those to see if they were worth being graded or not before. They wouldn't just sell raw graded mm -hmm. or raw circulated pre-1933 gold coins without looking at them first and saying, yeah, this is gradable or not. It would have definitely been through too many hands. Exactly. Exactly. But if you did inherit them, we've had that happen yep. quite, a, quite a few mm -hmm. times, actually, where somebody inherited them, brought them in. We looked at them and thought, these look like they are worth grading. Then we send them off to the wholesalers and they review them and, you know, correct me if I'm not doing the right, you know, the right timeline. But the wholesalers will review them and see if they're worth grading and then they'll send them off to be graded if they think they are. And if they're not worth grading when they get to the grading service, they won't grade them. They'll just send them back. Yeah, the grading companies do that. So if you think you have some that, that should be looked at, then you should definitely take a look at getting them graded if you've had them for long enough. Yeah, for sure. Um, are they less likely to be confiscated if slabbed? Well, they're con considered more of a collectible if they are slabbed, but... I think you can make the case could, for it better. Right. Right. You As can definitely make the case for it being rare and unusual, with special value to collectors if it is designated by PCGS or NGC mm -hmm. as a certain qualified, you know, right quality. And I would have to say <laughs> that I personally own more that are slabbed than aren't, but I own both. Yeah. I own both. Yeah, and they both and they both do different things for your portfolio. Correct. Um, which is why I own both. Let's see. Um, well, I'm not answering that one's personal. Scroll down. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, this is good because we need some different length videos yeah. on here. It was a short so, one. yes. But uh, yesterday I was on live with Chris Rice and Lee from Rice TV X channel and Pimpy's Investment Chat. So we did that three way roundtable and we covered a lot of ground. Those guys were very, very organized and it was a lot of fun. I really like doing it with the two of them. It's just, it's a lot of fun. And he's, and he, did they talk crypto on that? A little bit. Okay. Yep. We definitely did talk a little bit of crypto. 
And next week, I'm going to be on Crush the Street. And we'll just stay tuned to our socials and we'll let you know when that one is posted. But I know that Edgar has been doing a lot of behind the scenes because as I'm talking, he's got a different camera that he's taking pictures of. And um, didn't you just, we just did some stuff with uh, Oliver because Oliver participated. He wasn't supposed to, but he participated in a video last week. He decided to start barking. So we had to, so people were like, Oliver. And now he's like probably. The benefits of COVID. Yeah, really. I think, isn't, wouldn't you say that he's about this tall above the desk now? He's taller than Daisy May, and Daisy May is a Mastiff, and he's only seven and a half months old. I don't know how big he's going to be. <laughs> he may be taller than me standing on all fours. Yeah, walk, oh, he's totally the, taller than part me. Of the, part of the video. Well, I tried to get him to be part of the video yesterday, actually, and all he would do is lay underneath at my feet, and he could barely fit under the desk. <laughs> He could barely you could use him as a really footstool. Funny. I did. I did. But if you like this, please give us a thumbs up and make sure that you share all of these videos because we are in definitely a very critical time right now. And so, you know, the more people that understand what's happening and can get themselves protected, the better. Because as we know, it is absolutely positively time to cover your assets. And here at ITM Trading, we do that with the Wealth Shield, which is composed of physical gold, physical silver, because that's what protects your wealth better. It's pretty simple. So tomorrow, I will definitely be doing a piece on CBDC, Central Bank Digital Currencies. You don't want to miss that one. I promise. And you're going to want to share, share, share. So we will see you tomorrow. And until then, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.